Hello everyone, this is Carlos Oslar, and I'm here today with you in our very first podcast episode. Today we're starting strong, actually. I'm not going to lie, I am pretty pumped. We're starting with CSGO, and more specifically, with two people that you very well know already. Nathan, MBK, and Richard Shucks. Two legends uh, from the Corner Strike kind of community. Everyone knows them. And uh, I think this is going to be, I mean, I'm not going to lie. This is going to be pretty conversational. And I think you're going to get to kind of understand and know how these people think, um, how these people react when uh, problems appear, when success is found. First and foremost, I want to be absolutely honest. I've never, ever hosted anything before. So this is going to be my first time. I hope you guys enjoy. And please bear with uh, us, bear with our inexperience. But you know what? I'm going to have some fun. I have zero that's on my mind. So I don't want to waste your time. Um, I want to go directly into this topic. Just dive in directly. By the way, if I do like this, you can see the G2 Army flag right behind me, giving me the confidence I need on top of the confidence I earned by hitting the gym throughout the last few months, you know? I don't know, you know, I, I have no one right now to answer me, but I'll be honest, I'm, I'm proud of myself. So I'm assuming you are too. With that said, let's get, it, let's get started, right? So our CSGO team, we started in G2 Esports, um, you know, in CSGO. I mean, you know, we started in Gamers too, I guess, before uh, with the Polish team, but with, let's just call them better teams, we started um, competing in CSGO when we created the brand G2 Esports. Our first team was, of course, the team that we created. Uh, we pretty much helped build ourselves with Scream, Fox, Michael Lele, you know, Dennis, Rain, all these people. Um, it was, I will say, a very successful kind of endeavor. It was one of the first times that an international team was put together. Uh, and then we dived into the French scene. Now it gets spicy, it gets spicy. Let's be absolutely honest, when it comes into competitive success, we probably found more competitive success with uh, French teams. Uh, we started, as you guys know, with um, what was never considered a super team per se, but ended up playing very well with um, um, Smith, Shox, uh, with, um, with, 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 with Scream, of course, and you know, we had RPK and yada, yada, yada. During that time, we also had an existence it went pretty good. I mean, don't get me wrong. We had, we had, I remember one major, we were, you know, starting to get going and, and the scrims were amazing. And then we got into the major and I think we got like, like three top teams. It was like Fnatic on their prime and, and, and I think Face Clan or someone like that, which were not really on their prime, on their prime, but were also very tough. And SK Gaming, I remember, I remember that. It was really, really tough. So we didn't go through, but we played very well. So something to be proud of. We won a few tournaments as well. I think we won ECS in London. And then um, it all came down to the team that we currently have, um, or we had, I guess, uh, two weeks ago, right? Until two weeks ago. That team, as you guys know, is the so-called super team, right? That team consists of um, Richard, Chox, MBK, Buddy, um, Kenny S, of course, and Apex, right? Those five and Smith as a coach. That would be a set up that everyone would be you know highlighting and talking very well about even before they got to compete so the expectations were extremely high with that said i'm going to remain as pragmatic as i can because all these things are going to be discussed with the players uh, so i'm just going to make or, or do a very 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 fast rundown on 2017. in 2017 we had mild success and uh, mild failures too right and i call it mild because they were not that horrific Although if you compare them with our expectations and your expectations, they were catastrophic indeed. But some of the highlights would be DreamHack Malmo. We won the tournament. Uh, we also won EPL. And we also won uh, DreamHack. What did we win? DreamHack what? Production, help me out here. We won DreamHack Malmo. We won EPL. And then we won, well, another DreamHack, okay? Anyway, the um, case in point here, at some point, the team was uh, starting showing kind of weaknesses when it comes into consistency, 
And due to that, we ended up uh, kind of uh, jointly deciding to make a change. And the change is the reason we're here right now with you. Uh, you probably read the news already. You probably watched the video of me talking to the camera, explaining the, the lineup changes. And after all of that, you still had a lot of questions. So that is pretty much the reason why we're here and pretty much the reason why we intend to uh, give you as much visibility and transparency as we humanly can. Uh, there is no preparation for this. In other words, the players don't know what they're going to be asked, although I'm assuming they, they know what, the, <laughs> what this is all about. Um, I told them that they can be as transparent as they want to be. If they want to be 100% transparent, they're free to do so. Uh, I would very much love to. And uh, what's next is to introduce the players. Shut up, Carlos. Let's introduce the first um, guest which is going to be Nathan, more known as MBK, Corner Strike legend. Many of you know him. He's been uh, in pretty much every iteration of success, every successful iteration of CSGO lineups. Um, I think we have him with us right here, right now. Um, That's correct. Doing? Hey, they good in here. Very, very good. I, I know you're actually, uh, you're in Berlin right now, right? Yes, correct. Uh, we all arrived in Berlin uh, yesterday. Uh, Oscar is arriving today, and uh, we're starting our boot camp for uh, a week. Where, where were you from in, in, in France? In France, where I'm from? Uh, near Strasbourg, northeast of French. Next, how, cold, next to how cold does that place get? Uh, much colder than uh, Spain, that's for sure. <laughs> okay, and, so much uh, colder than Spain, but I bet it's not colder than... I was about to say the F word right there. It's Not colder a, than Berlin. It's the same. It's the exact oh. same. It's the same thing. Yeah. So I, I, you, you learn to love it. You, know? you learn to love it. How can you yeah. learn to literally be under temperatures that make you die? I mean, the human, <laughs> the human body is not composed to withstand these temperatures, Nathan. You must know this, okay? That, that's, you literally that's... have to wear different, like, layers of clothing. Exactly, yeah, that's the whole point. And then, and then... When you die. What, what is and that? Then, nature is beautiful with snow. It's more beautiful with snow than, uh, than with nothing. I know, right? You know what? I'm going to stay with my Spanish heat. I'm going to stay <laughs> yeah, with exactly. the sun hitting my face and, you know, 30 <laughs> degrees Celsius, uh, rather than freezing to death here in Berlin. I'm living in Berlin, too. Right, so we'll meet throughout this week, you know that. Uh, we'll go, we'll go mm, have lunch, sure. dinner somewhere. Fancy. By the way, Berlin has the highest number of uh, Michelin stars, in, 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 or one of the highest number of Michelin stars in Europe, actually. More than Paris, believe it or not. All right, that's, uh, that's fucked up, but, uh, you know, if, if that's a fact, I'll take that. It, it is a fact. It is a fact. I mean, Berlin is a beautiful culinary trend, you know? <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, maybe, maybe, maybe the trend has shifted, and uh, yeah. the trend's not there anymore. All right, man. So, you know, let, let's get started. Um, you know, I, I, I would love to, to, you know, you probably heard uh, the introduction I made uh, as sure. pragmatic as I could on, on the successes that we've gone through and touch a little bit on the failures. So if you could kind yeah. of uh, walk yourself through 2017 and how do you consider the year a success or a failure and, and why? Yeah, um, so talking in general, of course, uh, I think it's pretty obvious that it is um, a failure compared to what we expected to, um, to be for the year with this, uh, with this roster. Um, I mean, we had hopes of saying, you know, we're going to be the first team, not, not the first team, but like we're going to win two majors in a row. You know, fuck it, we're going to take it all. And, uh, and in the end, yeah, of course, it, um, it, it didn't happen that way. And uh, yeah, we had a slow start, which was not necessarily a bad thing in the sense that we were building things uh, the right way and not having like a hot start like a lot of French rosters had before. And, um, and so, yeah, we, we managed to put things together and uh, put one step in front of the other. And I think that was a good process. But in the end, what lacked throughout the year was, um, you know, consistency, uh, whether it is for attitude, work ethic, or just purely um, in-game to do things when they were working the exact same way, tournament after tournament. And so, yeah, to me, that was um, the big thing, like inconsistency throughout the year. That was the problem with, with this roster, being able to produce the same level of game, even after event, 
regardless of win or lose, right? So that's um, that's to me how I see the year. So we had some, obviously we had some very good wins where we played excellent kind of strike, uh, both individually and as, and as a team, but we couldn't manage to make it work on, on the longer term and the whole year. And um, so that's where this team has been uh, a failure mainly. So, of course, again, you, you don't have to get into uh, the ins and outs, but yeah. you can if you want to. Um, uh, what do you think are kind of more specifically uh, the reasons you, 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 you think that uh, in some areas the team has failed? Yeah. Um, I mean, uh, it's hard to pinpoint it to something, uh, really. It was just, uh, you know, kind of... Uh, mood and mentalities we had at some point throughout the year where uh, we didn't have that again that consistency of um moving forward as a team being together working um on the game totally and just uh, staying you know within what works for us and so all those changes every time whether it is position changes or role changes or i don't know anything anything on that regard was something that put us you know out of the good meta and um and so yeah i think i think there was like it, again like it's hard to to say like this or that person uh didn't do right but like team just went to shit at some points and uh and it was hard to uh to get back up after after that i see yeah i i can hear i can see that It'd be hard to pinpoint a single thing yeah. if it's the team who loses and yeah, you may have some understanding of what went wrong, really. Uh, yep. But but pinpointing one single thing, you, you just don't think is fair, right? And so uh, I mean, we we tried some changes, you know, changing uh, to create some new um, things in the game. For instance, on the city side, where um, I took leadership but for for some point, it, it brought some ideas, and then Chuck took it again, and then we still were working those ideas with him um, leading the charge and. Um, so yeah, we tried some fixes, but nothing really worked on the on the long term. I see. I see. Now, try, try to, let, let's go a little bit of a step back. Yeah. Um, when you look at the team that you currently have, um, if you were to go back in time one year, yeah. would you uh, do anything differently? Uh, in other words, perhaps, again, you don't have to mention names uh, nor mm. anything of that nature, but... Would you have focused on different traits? Would you have um, focused on having a different kind of combination of players, perhaps? Uh, I think roster-wise, uh, it was the necessary move, and like you know what what made a lot of sense when we put it put it all together. And um, and yeah, the execution was probably not made the best. Where we could have focused against the Marias um, specifically, so like relationships between players, um, you know, work ethic. Uh, staying uh, on a on the same line, like on the same path throughout the year, and not changing game style, not changing this or that thing, and uh, and I think that was um, that was a big part of um, you know what we could have done better uh, for the past year because uh, we, I mean, you know, all the individualities were there. Um, we, we we had it all to to win everything, you know, to win uh, most of the big tournaments and. Uh, and the approach we had, I guess, was uh, not the not the best one. Right. You you mentioned uh, work ethic, and and again, um, I, I of course have more context than the viewers, and and maybe I know the answer to this question, uh, but they don't. So, um, would you say that one uh, of the reasons that became a problem, in other words, one of the reasons why uh, the lack of uh, motivation to play the game and whatnot became a problem? due to um, a few competitive success kind of tournaments uh, you had um, kind of the team pretty much uh, uh, as a whole or some specific people from the team uh, just didn't find enough motivation to, to keep going, thinking that they already were good enough? Do you think that could be a, a challenge that you guys went through? Um... I think regarding our past and regarding the fact that all the players in that roster had, you know, already success before, I think um, it was not necessarily this, but just a general mentality thing. Where at some points in a year, um, it was some specific moments. So like the, around the quarterfinals at ED when we lost against Clan Nine, uh, there was like 
uh, the end of September, I think. So there are like you know some specific periods where we, where we had to go big talks to try to you know put that motivation all together again, and um, and so those are more things that were linked to players and how they approach the game, how they want to be competitors, how they want to uh, be in tournaments and all that kind of stuff. And um, and yeah, I mean, you know, for some players, it's going to be important to be with friends and be, you know, uh, be very close to his teammates in order to enjoy wins. Uh, for some people, uh, winning is everything, and it doesn't matter whether you're friends with your teammates or not, if you like or dislike someone in the, in the roster. For some, they want to be stars in the team and then they're going to enjoy winning you know it, it could be like a lot of reasons and i think it's very specific to to people to find their own and um and and be motivated by that and, and have that motivation fit into the bigger plan of winning the team with the team well, what's your personal take in, in motivation um uh, you know i yeah we, we we know there are players that are very driven by playing with uh, people they like and we know there are players that are very driven by having the best possible team board and yeah. winning. Um, where would you place yourself and where would you place the rest of the team that you had in 2017? Um, the thing is, that, like, I can't really talk for everybody in the roster, but I think the, the first thing we're going to try to do was, uh, is going to be to you know, set those goals for everybody to be more or less the same, where we can't have like five individual players wanting, uh, you know, five individual things, because then um, it's possible, for instance, to have a, a, a car that has four wheels and five people in the car, with which each one of them have a steering wheel, and then they can all choose to go wherever they want to, and, and that that's not possible. Like everybody has to go towards the same direction. So, uh, first of all, that's going to be the first thing to you know put together for the team, right? And uh, and then yeah, regarding motivation, I mean, for me, it's just, you know, I want to be the best there is in Counter Strike, and I, I want my team to be the best there is in Counter Strike. And I don't care about me personally being, you know, ranked number one whatsoever. Like to me, that doesn't matter. Uh, some players are driven by this, I'm not. And um, and so now I want to put the team in a position where, as a group, we're gonna have the same goal, same motivation, same view of the game and uh and then just fucking go for it like it, it is time to just you know um stop thinking about extra things that don't really matter because we're not at the level where we're winning right now so anything so like it doesn't matter whether somebody is good or not like winning and then if you're consistent in winning you will see where you end and you know give spots and places to the players that want to be you know um shining individually or that kind of stuff i see so, um, you know, you and I had, had talks and, and actually long talks, uh, yeah. especially in relation to, um, to, and maybe I'm committing a mistake on jumping too far into, in, into kind of the, the new team, but um, I, 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 I feel like it's a good follow-up question. Mm -hmm. When you um, explain to me all your thought process and so on, and, and yeah. how you envision Connor Strike and how you envision uh, the success of a team over time, I kind of started to understand uh, much better the way you think and the way you would like to lead. But yep. before knowing that context, I did have um, a personal doubt, even though I consider myself not, a, not an expert in Corner Strike. But I did, uh, you know, I always look at the trend and I try to identify, I, I mean, the trend, the trend and, the, and the past achievements in order to identify yep. whether something's going to sure. work. And what I know for a fact is that you as a player have been always incredible now i have actually got to read uh, i read everyday things you know that's my job yeah, i read sure. mentions in twitter i read reddit every day i read um everything i can and by reading some of these mentions or comments some people asked why does mbk think that he can lead a team when previously he yeah. hasn't been able to do it con uh, successfully and i want you to use this time and this kind of podcast to explain to them why they're wrong or why you think they're wrong. Sure. Um, so, so first of all, I think to start, um, I, I was planning to more or less, I mean, you know, I prepared everything on paper because I need, you know, that's my way of working. Like I want to put everything on paper and then work with it with the players. And, and so first off, 
everything that I'm making right now, uh, I plan on you know releasing it at some point where it's going to be in French. Maybe people are going to be able to translate it. I think it's not a problem for the internet. But um, like in some time in a f like in the future, uh, I want people to realize the work that is being put in how to you know create something that is more than just you go, you go here, you go there, we do this tactic, we do that. Like there's a much deeper thought process that they can go into it in order to you know really create something. And um, to touch on why it didn't work before and why it will could and will work now. Um, there are several things. So first of all, in the past, it was always you know short periods where I was taking an older team that was not working, tried to put on something new, tried to give you know like light the fire up again, and uh, and, and make it work again. And, and it was never really working because it was not like I was not put in a position where I had full control over everything I wanted to do, uh, giving a mentality to some players because everybody knew that it was going to be here for like two, three months and then go back to like a normal. Like back to the, the older ways, and uh, and now with this thing, I have full control of the roster where um, I can give all my thought process. I can be completely transparent. I can plan on more than two or three months. I can just create something that is that that goes much deeper in relations to what I think and to actually how it's going to be translated on the server. So creating systems like game systems creating some specific defenses working with some players to have them uh like for instance uh kenny i, I would put him into some specific systems where he's going to have full freedom and so you know I, I want to give trust to the players to do what they want to do uh kenny and dan being the two most aggressive of the, of the roster they're going to be able to be more put forward and i would trust them to you know doing whatever they want at some point in the game and on the other hand they're going to trust me in uh, putting them in the right positions, creating the proper game that I want to put forward and, and, and develop with them, and and that's where it, it is. It, it doesn't seem like much for everybody outside of the roster or the organization, um, but it is very important to know that uh, there's no real time limit. Like I'm creating a game that would be sustainable, that would be complete, that everybody would enjoy playing, and, and that takes you know that takes time and that takes uh me to have all the power on our roster to actually create it and that's where the big difference is between before and now and where i feel now i have all the tools that i can use i can dictate more or less how i want the game to be played 100 percent by creating everything from scratch putting all the basics with the game with the with the team and with the players mm -hmm. and and that's where i see a big difference um and and I'm 100% sure that I would be able to to make it to make it work because um, I've been observing, you know, for eight years. Uh, I've been under Existence, Happy Shocks, which are the three bigger names uh, that were here in the French GS community. And um, and through all that experience that I took with them, I think I learned to build myself as a person, as a player. And now I want to be at the point where I'm building this with and for other players around me. You were talking about other players and how you um, intend to build them and intend to get the best out of them. Yeah. When we look at 2017, um, we are looking at a, you know, just different names, right? Um, mm -hmm. We could see how uh, uh, Shocks would go off uh, some tournament, Kenny would go off some tournament, um, Apex would go off in some tournament, and Buddy was very often kind of that backbone of team. Uh, but many people would um, suggest that uh, in this specific example, Kenny was not, a, and, and he himself has said it multiple times, yep. he had incredible tournaments, however, he wasn't consistently incredible, which is what yep. everyone, even himself, expects from him. How can you unlock, uh, unlock or unload, if that's a word, yeah. if that's a word <laughs> sorry, um, the, the, the best Kenny, the titan version sure, um... of Kenny? Um, I, th I think it is something that is uh, quite clear. In a sense, I mean, to me, in my mind at least, it's clear, right? Where um, it, you, you just need to put him on the path, right? Like, give him that freedom without giving too much freedom. So, like, putting him in a square, and then he has full freedom to that, you know, square, right? And, uh, and to me, that's how he's going to be able to reach uh, his full potential. There is that part, and there is also obviously the individual level part where he has to play the game 
uh, train himself more than he did before, and um, and then have him you know, enjoy the game. I think it's very pivotal for each player in the roster to enjoy what they're doing. If they want to, you know, uh, compete at their best and be good individually and, and for the roster. And and so that's the whole system that I'm trying to put in Project. I know all the players for years. I know how they want to approach the game. I know what they like to do. And I've created systems, uh, systems, defenses, uh, default positions, et cetera, that will allow them to be more creative in their own way and and and, and do, again, what they want to do in the game, not being um, stuck in a system where yeah, they, w- they would have you know some weight in their shoulders. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and it's always when players were shining. Uh, for instance, you have, I mean, in SK, for instance, it's something that they did pretty good. Fair can play super aggressive. Cold would be super complimentary by playing rather passive, and um, and have her you know make space for him. And so with different individualities, if you understand them correctly, you can create that game that would be sustainable in the long term. And, and that's that's my plan with each player. You know, like that's the ultimate goal that I wanna that I wanna achieve. This plus being efficient in game. And, um, and so that's why it takes it's gonna take a bit of time. That's why I wanted to make a bootcamp instantly because the ideas that I have are. Uh, different from what happened in France before, and so mm-hmm. it is going to be a change for everybody in the roster to approach kind of strike a different way and uh, mm-hmm. and understand how I want them to succeed and be successful in the game. Okay, so we have people asking a lot of questions with the hashtag yep. G2 Podcast on Twitter, mm-hmm. and we have one from Keisuke. Um, uh, it's at Keisuke two four six. And he asks, uh, how was the communication on TeamSpeak during the week uh, in EPL? <laughs> because everyone, of course, knew uh, what yeah. was happening. How was it? Um, I mean, to be fair, I'm not going to say it was super amazing, super great, of course. But uh, yeah, I mean, uh, it was, uh, you know, like, that, it's something just to be a bit more general than just, just this thing. But um, it is... Um, it is one of the first time in France, I think, that a separation of uh, people in the roster, like roster changes happen with um, no, you know, hard fittings in a sense, where it was just uh, something that happened and there it is and everybody accepted it, right? So it was normal. Uh, like the only thing that changed that uh, I was leading for that week or for the previous week for all the official games and um, and Charles was just giving his input and, you know, all of that. So he, he like, he, the idea of the week is that everybody was free to do more or less whatever they wanted. I didn't want to impose anything to any player. Mm-hmm. And um and aside from that, I mean yeah, everything was, you know, normal. We just played I don't know, it was more like, you know, an, um a more elaborated FPL game that we played together against uh, against the other top teams that we faced. And uh that's just how we approached it because I think that was the most efficient for you know short term approach for, for for those games. And um and yeah, so I mean, no, no problem at all. Maybe people were expecting some more spicy things, but uh, but no, I'm sorry, there's there's nothing that happened there. So, you know, good. You're you're gentle, you're gentleman. That's why. <laughs> With that said, I have a follow up question myself. How was sorry, the mood? Yeah. And I'm pretty sure many fans have this question too. How was the mood yeah. in those failures when the team was actually together and the team knew that they they, they were gonna stay together for at least a long while? Yeah. Um, um, how was the mood? And and what did you do yourself as a um, as the captain, I mean, you were not the captain back then, but you are now. Yeah. So, um, what did you do back then, uh, and what didn't you do? What you yeah. learned from all those processes? Uh, uh, you mean so, so you're talking about that process that happened throughout the yeah. past few weeks, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, I think that, like, again, that the only way for us to perform at those tournaments, for instance, how we passed groups at SLTV and uh, had relatively good games, almost beat Fnatic in Katowice in groups. Um, you know, we just tried to, to take it cool because uh, we knew there were some problems. We knew um, some players were not happy in the roster, uh, and like there were all changes. You know, we, we we started the talks and everything, so we knew more or less that something was happening. And uh, again, like we took it seriously, but again, more relaxed in a sense that everybody was a bit more free to do whatever they wanted. There was no real, you know, pressure, and in that sense, that what. For instance, that SLTV made us perform a bit better because everybody was just playing, fragging, and dragging themselves, and uh, and uh, and it was a kind of a proof that you need mm-hmm. players to have uh, fun while playing, right? And um, and so yeah, because we knew that it was not going to go any farther than I don't know X weeks, 
uh, we didn't take the heart, the, the losses too seriously. But like we try to, we still try to prepare games, uh, watch together a bit. I mean, watch individually what's gonna happen, how to prepare the game individually, and um, and that's yeah what we, I think mainly focused on. And um, and the takes from this again, like because it was a weird situation, um, that, that whole moment that uh, is pretty rare in esports. Uh, I'm just trying to take the things that to me are interesting. So like again, putting players in the right positions. And having them enjoy what they do, um, that playing a bit more relaxed and not, is not a bad thing, kind of strike because uh, having no pressure, having no weight on your shoulder, that maybe if you do this move, you're gonna fuck the whole team up, uh, the whole game plan, that kind of stuff. So I think all those parts are rather important. So I try to take those things more than uh, we should not do this, we should not do that, because th those are gonna be different problems that would be with uh, the new roster that I don't really, you know. No, hundred percent yet, and like I will deal with them when they happen. Yeah, for for what's worth, I hope you don't consider uh, almost beating Fnatic a success. I hope <laughs> you, you can just two o them every time. Of you course, know? yeah. I mean, that's going to be the plan for sure. <laughs> this is like a Real Madrid Barcelona. Uh, yeah. In this case, we are we are Real Madrid. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna make that clear. <laughs> I'm gonna make that absolutely clear. Um, sure. All right, very good. Well, you know, um, you. You went through uh, the stuff that you thought you could go through in the, uh, you know, from, from the team, from the past, which, uh, which I respect. Um, now let's talk a little bit about the new team and when it com yeah. what comes imminently next. Sure. Um, you um, and I discussed about who uh, the fifth player in all this would be. Yeah. Um, and at the end of the day, we all decided that uh, Mixwell was probably the right choice, and I want you to kind of pitch Mixwell for for the fans. Sure. What can they expect from him, and what kind of player is he uh, mentally yep. in game? What role is he gonna play? We had a lot of questions in regards to is he gonna sure. be an MVP, second MVP, whatever. So feel free. Yeah. Um, first off, I've seen things that were that were pretty funny because it shows that how far some people can be from the reality. But I've seen like some stories, you know, that because he was Spanish, so you brought him in because, you know, there's like that, that pride of countrymen, that kind of shit. Uh, first of all, that is completely all wrong, not true, uh, definitely not happening. Um, I, I, like the thing is, um, now, now it's gonna be, feel a bit awkward because he's in the room with me. Uh, so, so he's gonna hear <laughs> what, what I'm saying. Um, but yeah, they're, they're, you know, I think I think I, can, I think people in general can clearly see when player is intelligent or you know just going with his emotions by his feeling, and um, and and I've always like in his past teams when he was playing like he is balanced between aggressive like you know understanding when to be aggressive when to fall back when to be you know a part of the team when to, when to be you know alone outside of the map etc. So that, so that part has always you know very quickly been attractive to me, and. Um, and then yeah, I think he's a very very solid player that didn't have the chance to like develop in all the you know best rosters. Like he's had decent rosters, but uh, nothing that was you know top five potential, uh, top three potential. Mm -hmm. And um, and also something a bit different, but like a bit more structured in, in a way. Because um, again, like this, this is just assumptions that I have, but uh, I think that in France, although it, it looks like we have a, a random game starter, which is go in headshot, uh, we generally have. a a history of having structured games. Like Happy mm -hmm. was very structured in a sense. Um, uh, Existence has always been very structured as well. And um, and Trucks was in some ways, or they were a bit more loose. And um, and so I'm really curious to see how he's going to develop into that. You know, okay. uh, a, a different approach of Counter Strike that, that that we have, and like with me it, it leading now an even different, even more different approach. And um, and then regarding role specifically, he's going to be um, he's going to be a bit uh, free, so like rotating most of the time on two sides. Uh, mm -hmm. He's going to be in general 100% free to up whatever he wants to. Um, so you're going to give him a lot of autonomy. So yeah, so he's going to be um, the second up. So I first of all I trust him to like handle his economy to have second up if he wants to. Uh, create uh, systems around him, both him and Kenyas, so that uh, we can work all over the map with. Two ops and that, that kind of stuff, mm -hmm. um, and on this and um, and yeah, so having like a, an impactful role, uh, he's going to be able to take decisions. Uh, he's not going to have like that much pressure on his on his shoulders, and uh, he's going to be 
kind of free in that sense to take decisions for the team um, by taking individual decisions for, for, for the development of a game inside of the game and around. So, um, so yeah, I think that's uh, that that sums up the role um, pretty well. That uh, that that's just going to be a part. All right, very good. Uh, we have another question from. Oh, but by, by the way, actually, do you have this flag yourself? Do you have this banner? I don't. Sorry, I don't. You know where to buy it? On the shop, probably. I don't. It's esports.com. <laughs> this wonderful banner. Everyone can. Actually, I don't even know if we have any left. So if we don't have any left, oh, shit. I'm so very sorry, people. Uh, so IT specialist, merchandise, head of merchandise, right now, <laughs> fucking produce a million of these, okay? Done. They're, 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 they're go. It's on the way. So people, you can buy directly right now. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody um, knows. I, I'm gonna go to the question then. The Rush B right. podcast, which is by the way a podcast from also CS:GO. Shout out to it. I never listened to it, but I hope it's good. If it's not, I'm sorry, guys. I'm, I'm throwing you to the dogs here, but. Um, how much of a concern is the language barrier with Mixwell coming yeah. into the team? Will, this event, will his eventual inclusion into the team be dependent on his French-speaking proficiency? Um, I think, you know, at the, um, at the very end of it, like on, the, on the longer stretch, in a sense, yes, he will, he will need to be 100% fluent in French in, in, in every regard, and so being a part of it will be in French fully. Uh, for the immediate time right now, everybody can speak English in the team, that's not a problem. But like, of course, we're going to force everything for him to you know, speak French. Like he, I think he has very solid basis. He can understand everything in French. Like it's just a matter of you know, speaking French, not being ashamed of making mistakes or being a part of the group in that sense. Because um, I mean, it would be the same for me in German. Like I can understand a lot in German, but I just, you know, I just don't like speaking it because I don't, I'm not comfortable with it. Right? And so except that now it's going to be you know, a kind of business matter in a sense that because he joined the team, and he he's gonna have to make that extra step, right? And um and, and so uh, in the end, I'm sure it's not gonna be a problem. Um, you know, we're gonna start parking very quickly, and I give there some mistakes, like we know how hard it's gonna be at the beginning to to mm -hmm. put everything together. And uh, and so it's just a matter of time. Like it's something obviously that is not gonna happen, you know, from one day to another. But uh, but I'm sure that it's gonna be all good. Like everybody is gonna be very welcoming. Uh, but he's going to do everything that is possible to put him as comfortable as possible, whether it is through language, just, you know, just being a part of the group. All right. Very good. Uh, we have another question. Hashtag due to podcast, by the way, everyone throw your questions. Hashtag due to podcast on Twitter. Um, at Tobis asks, will Apex actually talking about Apex, uh, Tobis, you have to wait, buddy, because I have a question about Apex. Too. <laughs> this question yeah. is from me, Nathan. Uh, um, I've seen, Plentiful comments about Apex's aggression. Yeah. What is your take on Apex's sometimes mindless, brutal, <laughs> incredible, ruthless yeah. aggression? And what will you do to um, kind of uh, fix it or help him with it? Yeah. Um, I think it is the same, uh, you know. Um, matter as a as any super aggressive player right to me it's like you know like having a demon in a box right where you can unleash it and then he's going to just do each and anything you don't know whether it's going to be good or bad and the idea to me is to take it and put it in a controlled environment where he's going to be full of like fully able to do whatever he wants and, and have it just controlled in an environment where there are systems where he can go forward when he's going to be supported by one, two players or supported by Kenny or, you know, those kind of stuff. And that's where, to me, it can be, um, again, like using players better in that sense. And so putting him into a position where he can do what he wants. And um, on the other hand, you know, that it's a part of the team and creating with him something to make it work as a group and all together. So I think it's I think it would be wrong to like completely negate that aggressivity and his natural game style. And, and it's it's how I say to the players, like it's a give and take situation where I would give you full liberty to do whatever you want, what you enjoy, be aggressive, go pick here, go alone, go with a teammate, it doesn't matter. Do that. On the other hand, if I tell you not to do something, if I tell you to respect the game plan, if I tell you to stay within those limits, you do it as well, right? And and so it's kind of a you know mental contract. You scare me. You scare me. I'm not <laughs> playing with you. 
uh, there, that's, there's going to be rules. That's uh, that's the first start. And uh, and so putting putting you know all of that very controlled and um, and being able to use players their abilities as long as it's a part of the game plan and what I want to do. And um, and, and that's how I want to approach. like it's a general concept that is especially going to be applied to him, for instance, because he's a very aggressive player. Mm -hmm. And uh, and for everything that is also basics, that is, uh, for instance, four and two clutches, or like four and one situations, or like economy, anti-eco. Like there's going to be rules that are going to be they are going to be accepted by the players if they're accepted beforehand. Then nobody can really say shit about it because if you accept it to those rules, and you don't apply them later on, you're the problem. You made a mistake. That's you can only rely on yourself to that that you did something wrong, right? And and, and those are the kind of things that I want to put together with that roster and why it cannot be made from one day to another. It's going to be a whole process to like put that mentality um, inside each player's head that mm -hmm. like how I want to approach the game and how they can evolve in that you know approach and game style. We have, we have a comment from CDXX saying MBK laying down the fucking law right there. <laughs> right there, everyone. The police has come here. Exactly. <laughs> Get, get out, everyone. All right, so, Tommy, I'm sorry I made you wait, bro. Uh, your question will come shortly. Will Apex still call on Mirage? And is there any chance of you playing Train? Like, this has been... Like, I, I have to add some comment here. I'll be honest, yeah. Nathan. Yeah. I despise to see um, uh, our team, right. which uh, I have very high expectations of, yeah. not play every single map. I'll be honest here. All right. So, what is your thought process in regards to this? Okay, so again, I have a different approach, I think, uh, from uh, from what has been done before. So the systems that I want to do, in general, in Counter Strike, are systems that can be applied regardless. Of the so maps are different layouts. So one that is a bit more different than the others are going to be new because of the just the layout of the map, how it's made. But like everything that I want to create, the systems that I want to put in place, the binomials, people working together, are systems that can work on each and every map, right? We're going to be playing with two excellent operas, um, Oscar and Kenny. And not playing train would be criminal, right? Uh, at, at some regard, like that, that is a map that is famous for typers. That, that would be that would really be bad if we don't play that map. So it's something that's going to happen. There is a whole process. I have a whole plan in mind, uh, time-wise, uh, week after week, on, on which, which map to play, how to approach them, etc. cetera. And, um, and I want to play all the maps ultimately, right? That's going to be the end goal because some teams uh, naturally are not going to play all the seven maps. They're going to be good in six. So you can play with that against other opponents and like work better on the vetoes. And like ultimately, again, like you're going to be better overall if you can play all the maps because you're going to have a bigger edge against other teams. And um, and so that's the end goal, obviously. But it's just going to take time. So it's a process. Okay. And um. And so yeah, it, it's something that is uh, that is gonna happen for sure. I can't tell you because that would be too much giving away. Uh, Time-wise, how how it's gonna be in what we're gonna play at what time. Mm -hmm. And um, but yeah, that, that's that's definitely happening. All right, we, we we trust. I actually am very very mindful of your time. Um, I know you you have practice very soon, so I'm gonna yeah. make. Mix will arrived and I couldn't even say hi to him. That's okay, Miguel. That's how dedicated I am. Wait, man. Come on, you have like the whole week. <laughs> he's, playing, he's playing that much in front of me. I didn't say hi to him. God damn. <laughs> That's a bad leader right there. That's okay. <laughs> Tell Miguel to come to the camera and say hi. He want, you, want, you want him to come to the camera? Yes, yeah. So he can, so people can see how beautiful we pick up. Like we are, it's one of the variables, you know? We just pick up <laughs> the pretty ones. Uh, Oscar. By the way, you have beautiful eyes. You're gonna come. You're gonna come here. Oh, that's. Uh, I mean, uh, yeah. It's okay. Hashtag no homo. But I'll take it. Thank you. I don't have to say no there homo. Is. I'm too alpha. I can, I don't need to say no homo. <laughs> All right, Hello? Hello? Hey, hey, how's it going, up. bro? He, he even has a jersey already. You know. He... Oh my God! You made me very happy. <laughs> Mix well. Wait, hold up, hold up. Okay, put, put me on, put me on. What's up, Oscar? Oscar, do you know <laughs> where you can buy that jersey? <laughs> g2esports.com slash shop and you can also buy this by the way I'm just, I'm just plugging it in mindlessly <laughs> alright bro you can, give, you, you can give the headset back to, to, to Nathan, we'll have one, one of these with you Oscar. we love you bro Shit. thank you, perfect teamwork teamwork 
All right, so let, let's go for one of these uh, questions from uh, Nell, actually. Nell is someone, yeah. he's, the, he's the, uh, the founder of, uh, was his Linkshot? A Flickshot, yeah. Uh, a Flickshot, yeah. Flickshot. I don't know if he's one of the founders, but he is yeah, a big part. Right, so, so he's, he's a guy that is, that is uh, he's being quite vocal about this move, and he's made yeah. very smart questions, uh, uh, questions that many other fans have. Uh, actually, you know, I mean, my background is League of Legends, whatever. I, 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 you know, I, I just make the questions I read. So if the question is stupid, you just tell me, Carlos, this question is stupid. <laughs> you know? um, but he asked, why not try out an in-game leader like existence of Major or M? Maj 3 r major yeah major yeah that is playing in the space holders right now yeah um yeah. Uh, i mean i, I think it's um it's kind of hard to just answer for, for for one reason but um mostly i think that the system that i have and like i think that after being for like eight years and have you know a heavy background of like all the teams i played in like i feel that now with because i was doing you know background work in all of the rosters so like uh, team talks, solutions to team problems, uh, playing roles that people didn't want to play, all that kind of stuff, you know, so, so like putting everything together, the team game in a sense. Um, I think I have what it takes right now, uh, which I maybe wasn't ready for, like, like I don't know, two years ago, um, or the first time when we, when I quit um, what was Titan back in the days uh, to create a mercenary team that became LDLC and years later. Uh, at that time, I wasn't ready for it. A mercenary team, you said? That, that was, that was the, the original name of, of the team, yeah. That's beautiful. Mercenary team. I love it. And, uh, and so we, like at that time, I don't think I was ready. I think I was missing some pieces that, you know, I wasn't expecting. But now, with more experience, more background, more ideas, I think that, um, that yeah, that now I'm ready to take on all the problems that can happen, have a better view of Counter-Strike as a whole and how to win in Counter-Strike and how to put a system together, how to create everything together. And, um, and so, yeah, that, I, think, I think now is the time where I can do that and, and without impacting my performance individually as well. So like being able to still be active and studied on my B-bomb site or, or that, you know, those, um, those part of, of the games. Um. I, I have just two questions and then I'll leave you alone. I'm very sorry. Niak, Jerome, the, the manager, coach, I'm sorry. I know you're watching. He's probably just messaging me right now, <laughs> pissed off, but I'm sorry about it. Nell has another question. And this guy, uh, again, I don't know if he makes smart questions, but at least he sounds like he makes <laughs> smart questions. Um, yes. He's asking um, uh, in regards to uh, a name that I've seen over and over in Reddit and I've I've been pitched about him. I've been, you know, in, it's a name that's been part of many conversations in which I've been a part of. Okay. And Zewo, what do you yeah. think about this up and coming guy that everyone talks about? Right. Um, I think first off, uh, he's an excellent player from what he showed. Uh, you know, there were, uh, there are a lot of people that are accusing him of like cheating, not being legit, but that kind of stuff. To be fair, again, like, as long as nothing happened, you know, you don't know, you never know. Like, there is no, there is no proof that he is cheating, right? So, like, I will go to that basis. Like, he is a good player, and um, and then on the other hand, I think he's a bit too young. Where um, back in the days in source, it was um, it was quite, it, it was much easier to bring a, a kind of unknown player with not that much experience, bring him, bring him in the top team, and make him play very well. I think that was very easy back in the days. Now, though. Um, with all the input, all the players, all the experience, all that kind of stuff that is now in Counter-Strike, it is much, much harder to bring someone that didn't have, you know, that kind of middle team that would, you know, be like a uh, top 20 team, top 25 nowadays, I think would be enough, where he gets more experience, plays a few international lands, is under pressure, is under a leadership that, you know, uh, is not built around him, especially the game. And, um, and to see him, how he would be in a situation in a, in a real team situation where he cannot do whatever he wants, where he has to be in you know some specific uh, things in order to make the team work, etc. And um, and so I think it's not a matter of the age. Uh, again, like I don't know the guy specifically um, from person to person. So it's not about the age. I think to me it's about the experience. Like he still likes that middle team where um, he's now in AAA. And that is you know they're they're a decent team. They're not. They're not they're not very I mean, bad, you, right? you like, can say they're good. mediocre, right? I mean, in right, yeah, they're, they're, like in comparison to like the the CS as a whole, they're like right. 
not there. Course, like, I think yeah, there is still, guess, there's still uh, like a middle, a middle ground, and then you have the top teams, right? So like exactly. I think he just needs that middle ground team, and if he keeps on playing that well there, then surely he's going to be one of the greats of Counter Strike and French Counter Strike because what he has shown with that little experience, his positioning, his headshots, his calm, all that kind of stuff, he has everything it takes, you know, to just be excellent. And uh, and I'm I'm really really looking forward to see how he's going to develop. How good he's gonna get and how like how far he can get in the future because um mm. yeah i mean he has like from an external point of view without knowing him in game he has what it takes to become excellent and mm -hmm. um and again looking forward to see how he's gonna develop how how good he can get in the okay. french uh, in the french industry. um all right very good well um last um very very last question sure go ahead um another one from nell um, of course, we're gonna we're gonna throw all his lists. Yeah, we just we just feature him. Here. Everybody just follow at Nell and Direct. Exactly. And, direct. That's a, that's a and free advertisement. He's gonna be so happy about that. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm gonna rephrase his question. I don't like his question. Um, but take that. What yeah, we had Smith as head coach. I'm not gonna get. Uh, I'm not gonna ask you what do you think he could improve on, or what do you think was bad, or whatever. Of course, I'm gonna be asking you about Jerome directly. Jerome will be. Uh, yep. the head coach of the team. He will be behind you in, in, in official games. Um, what do you think Jerome can bring to the team that will help the team succeed, even though Jerome may not be, again, uh, sure. a you know, analyst of the game or in, have deep knowledge about the game, per se? Yeah. There, there are going to be two things. So, so what's going to happen is that we don't have, we're not going to have a three-person staff anymore. Uh, so it's going to be down to two. Uh, the two things that are going to happen uh, is that uh, so Jerome Niak is going to have an approach that is more going to be towards mentality, professionalism, uh, respecting some rules uh, in and out of the game. Um, you know that that part, the more like mental part of mm -hmm. the whole roster, like having everybody on the same page, having people talking to one another correctly, and like have normal discussions, like elaborate discussions about kind of strike, etc. So all that stuff. And on the other hand, is going to be Nicholas and KJ. And then he's going to be working with me more into the direct approach of Counter Strike, so like the pure Counter Strike facts, statistics, working with them, putting them together, um, creating the right approach of the game, putting every player in taste for the one, two, etc. So that's those are going to be the very, two very different things and approaches that they will have, although everybody's going to work together, right? And um, and so that's uh, that's kind of the plan moving forward with that roster that staff that we know all for a long time and um and how they're going to be a part of building the team forward and um and uh and being good on the long term okay okay very good uh, for what is worth uh, from own experience with uh, jerome he's been fantastic and and from my own experience again when when we had a team with scream with shocks uh, etc he was incredibly incredibly helpful yeah, um, and, and the mental side, especially. Um, yeah, it's, sure. it's probably, it was probably one of our biggest weaknesses for 2017, the, keeping the mental yeah. up, making sure we don't tilt out of the face of Earth, which happened a few <laughs> times. <It did. laughs> and uh, well, just I want to give you um, an opportunity to speak to the fans about anything you want. You want to speak about Toblerone, yeah. anything really, just, just feel free. You have 97.3 seconds. 97.3, all right. Uh, first off, all right. I, I, some people are probably going to be disappointed that we didn't touch uh, me personally with you uh, about like the past roster, like the things that didn't go too well and why you know those changes happen, etc. I think it's going to be a part that is going to be more developed with shocks uh, because you know I think that's going to be much better in that sense where um, he would have his insight where why he didn't feel comfortable playing and moving forward with that roster. And um, and so first off that um, and second off, well I've seen a lot of things again and he's free to say whatever they want. But uh, yeah, thanks for the people that uh, trust me um, and, and us whole as a team, so me as an team leader and the team to do the right things and, uh, and you know, move forward, do something, bring back greatness in French Counter Strike and, uh, and bring back G2 to the top. And uh, that's, um, that's, that's our plan. I mean, that's, that's the only thing. That's the only reason why we do it. I want everything for victory, for success, whether it is for me or for the whole roster and G2, the organization. So. Um, yeah, thanks for the support. Uh, we'll be in action soon. We're starting as soon as I quit this podcast. We start working. 
uh, that's, uh, you go. that's definitely happening. And, um, and yeah, I mean, looking forward to the future. I think it's going to be very interesting. All right. Thanks, Nathan. Uh, you've been awesome. Thank you for having me. Have a great uh, start of the week. And uh, sure. let's meet up this week with the team. And let's... For sure, yeah. All right, man. Definitely. Thanks very much, bro. And, Thank you. Uh, See you guys soon. For everybody else, we have Shocks, Richard Shocks. Uh, in about two, three minutes. So let's do something. I actually need to get another one of these because everyone knows how good it is to drink soda while you're hosting a podcast. Um, two minutes break, three, two, one, production. Don't fuck me up. Hello, everyone. We are back. Am I muted? No, I'm not muted. Good stuff. Good stuff. Production quality on point. Podcast number one.
with G2 Esports and Carlos R, your host. We spoke with Nathan MBK for about an hour. Um, you know, we made a, a few a few good questions and he made a few good answers. Looking forward to the future. But now we have the other side of the coin. Um, we have the man himself, the legend. Again, I'm not a an expert in Counter Strike, but he's my absolute favorite player, and I've watched enough throughout the last three years. Um, I want to introduce you guys to Richard Papillon. You see my French? My wife's French. Hello, so, everyone. Hello, Carlos. How is it going, my man? Uh, pretty good, actually. I'm, uh, I'm taking care about the bench, so it's going pretty cool. <laughs> <You're> taking... <laughs> taking care of the bench, warming it up. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> that, that, that's funny. That's funny. You know, you you, you need you need a, a good pair of balls to actually uh, uh, you know take that uh, le, uh, as you're taking it because you know this year was full of ups and downs and you know w one could argue from look if, if looking from the outside that um, uh, you know they were not your fault and some people could argue that they were. And I think it's a perfect opportunity that you and I speak today and try to get into the whys, into the ins and outs of why everything happened. <clears throat> I repeat, you can be as <clears throat> transparent as you can. There's nothing, uh, at least from G2 side, there's nothing uh, you, know, you need to hide or anything. You can just be as forthright as you think you can be or want to be. Um, so with that, let's get started, all right? Yeah, sure, um, let's go. What are you right now, by the way? Where are you living right now? I'm at home. I'm at home uh, near to Marseille. Okay, near Marseille. Near Marseille. So actually, the, the weather must not be too bad there, right? Yeah, yeah, not too bad. And I'm really happy that uh, there is a, a good uh, dream act next month at Marseille, just near to me. And oh, yeah, that's but, true. But uh, I will not compete this time, unfortunately. But uh, that's not a problem. Will you be there? Yeah, I will still come as a spectator and say hi to people who want to see me or, or whatever. That's awesome. I'm, I'm sure French French people and anyone that's going to the event are gonna appreciate that you're there. Um, how, how are you doing with the with the? This is a bit off topic again. Uh, as I told you before, it was gonna be a conversation. But how are you doing with the with the with the wrist? Uh, how are you feeling? Uh, well, it's not uh, it's not changing since I'm not going to the sur surgery, so it's hurting every day. So it's really annoying. But uh, it's going on on Friday now, so it's like four days left so hopefully everything is going to be good uh it's a bit stressful because like someone is gonna touch my hand you know and taking a surgery on it normally everything should be fine i got like 19 95 percent like the operation went good but still like if i will have to get to surgery uh about my leg about my ass or whatever like i won't give a fuck but since it's my wrist and if you just take away my wrist. Uh, I don't know what go I'm going to do, Carlos, in the next few months. I, 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 know, few I, mean, I, I can't even begin to imagine where you, where you, the kind of stress you're probably going through. So uh, why don't we do something? I don't know. I, I, I don't even know if I believe in this, probably not, but imagine it works. Okay. So the 2,500 uh, people that are watching the stream, everyone give magic to Shucks. The, the positive magic. So his wrist operation goes a hundred percent right. And he gets back on track as the best player in the motherfucking world. Ah, I can assume I will. <laughs> well, man, that was, um, you know, that, I'm, I'm not going to lie. When, when I learned about this, I, I felt incredibly, I mean, I, I know it's not the case, you know. And I know we are uh, about the same age or I guess uh, you're, I mean, we, are, we are very close. But I do feel in, in, in many ways uh, as a dad figure with you, uh, just because of everything we went through. And when I learned about this, man, I had one of the worst days, like in the last years by far. I was, I was feeling so, so bad about it. Just because I was trying to be empathetic with your position. When I was a player myself, imagine that would have happened to me. And I just can't, like you're being incredibly mature and, and, and kind of balanced, to be honest, uh, considering what's at stake. And believe me, man, Believe me, man, we have, I have production telling me things. Believe me, man, 
we have uh, we we are incredibly optimistic uh, on, on on your future. I've, I've read everything I could about this surgery, uh, and and it just looks good. It just looks good so far. Let's best of luck with the doctor. Best of luck with everything, and best of luck with the whole procedure. Thank you. All right, so let's get started. 2017. Uh, even before, you know, before 2017, um, you were playing with RPK, with Scream, with Smith in your team, um, with Buddy. How do you feel with that team? And what made you believe that changing it would give you better results, despite having gone through pretty high levels of success, success in 2016. Uh, this team, honestly, was one of my the best team as a human being I had in all my career. Because uh, RPK, Scream, Body and Smith uh, is some person like it's really easy to deal with. And we had a lot of fun together and everything was really good. When it came to the game, uh, we had a really good period when I took the lead. We make a really good run at uh, ESL Pulling, going to a best of five against uh, Luminosity Gaming, it was, I think, at this period. Then we, winning the ECS. Uh, and I think what cost us a lot with this team is uh, break, because we took like one month break, plus RPA had some ears problem uh, where he could not go to the um, E League playoffs, so we mm -hmm. had to play with Fix as a stand in. Yeah. So, like, we didn't play as a team for like one month and a half, which is like way too much. And when we came back after, like, we were kind of lost, like, how do we play CS together and stuff? So, it was a really hard period. Uh, and I just think, like, I have didn't have that uh, enough experience that I have today, uh, especially as a captain, because uh, it was my first team being a really a red captain and I wanted to make change because in my opinion we had some uh, players such as RPK for example and um, like we had several problems like RPK didn't play the game enough uh, he was not uh, enough trying to improve himself so I could find like uh, he needed to step up and he wasn't putting the, the work for it uh, so that was a problem uh, Scream began to like uh, being hard to to control, you know, uh, as a player, when you're trying to tell him you should do this, you should do this. When you start winning events, there is some players like who start getting a lot of confidence. And when it starts, it's really hard uh, as a captain or even a, as a manager to take them like down and like everyone needs to stay uh, where they are good. And to always be humble. Keep their feet on the ground. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Yeah, that's it. Uh, and talking about Smith, uh, I think I personally did a big mistake by forcing him to take the AVP. Because uh, since 10 years, he never have been uh, that player with his main AVP, who is like a guardian, a Kenny, a uh, simple or whatever. He always someone who was a beast with a rifle and just took the AVP when he was uh, feeling it, you know, like, okay, I need to take the AVP right now because it's going to be the good thing. And by forcing him, uh, of course, like, he didn't have a good level. It's like, if you force me to take a main AVP, like, I'm not going to be as good as I can be as a player. And then he started to miss, and all was about psychologic and all in his mind, getting all the people trash talking him, even sometimes the commentators uh, during events. And it was a really, really hard period. And we didn't find the solution uh, just to sort him out uh, about this problem. Uh, taking all in this consideration, um, I knew that uh, Envy had a lot of problems in their team. They came to me uh, in uh, August or July and wanted already to make some changes, uh, which I was not angry with because we just won like. Wait, they poached you? Who poached you, Richard? <laughs> I, I don't well, remember. Who Mike, do I have to kill him? <laughs> no, but I don't remember who came, but they came. Wow. And. Um, <laughs> How convenient. And, <laughs> and, they, okay, don't worry. <laughs> and they wanted me to, I mean, they wanted to create the team at this time. And because we just make a good final in APL, we just winning ECS. Okay, we felt the major, but we had a fucking hard group. So it was not something like uh, really catastrophic. And. 
with that, like, I didn't want to make any change. I was like, my team at the moment, like, I'm okay with the result and everything is going good. So we'll see maybe later if things like are going bad or whatever. But at the moment, I don't want to do anything. And when I just told you, like, everything how the post year had been after the vacation, uh, it was really hard and it was in my mind. Like, uh, of course, when you heard name like NBK, KNES, Apex, uh, you, 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 you know, you, there is a little voice in your head that say you, damn, if you can work together, like it can be fucking amazing, you know? And uh, today, honestly, uh, I'm not sure like it was the best decision of my life to have made this team, but fingers done. It's like this. So I take it as an experience and I always uh, never took the look in the past and always go further in the future. You have to grow up every day. You have to take it as an experience every day and just to be better, better, and to not do the same mistakes. Um, and just what happens uh, by going with this team is like I never played with Kenny, so I didn't know what to expect. Uh, last time was I, I was playing with NBK was like at least two years before. Uh, yeah. Yeah, more than two years, so two and a half, something like this. And Apex, last time I played him was in 2010. So like uh, seven years ago, you know. And I think that was the principal uh, mistake I did. It just like we we made the team together by thinking like, okay, we're taking the best player in every world and like it's going to fit, you know. Uh, like... 90% of the people of uh, the person who have think like we just found the same and things are you never know how is a player or how is a person since you are not like almost hours a day with mm -hmm. the person yeah so, sharing kind of boot camps and training and etc that's it and that's where i think uh we just should have maybe make a, a a test period for like three or four months and i think if we have done this uh maybe it will be enough to see like uh even if like on the paper it's magic the team just doesn't fit i see well you 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 jumped yourself into into kind of the the, the new team already um and and you did mention that um you consider some of the choices made in regards to the lineup as potential mistakes. But we'll get into that later. But diving into why you thought at that moment in time that was the best possible team you could put together. If you could walk me a little bit through your thought process back then, and then in, 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 the few, I mean, in this podcast, in a few minutes, we can walk through your thought process today, if you wish to. Uh, but I would like to know back then what you thought about in regards to the team and the lineup and whatnot. Yeah, sure. So what I was thinking uh, is like, uh, okay, we're going to have uh, Smith as a coach. Uh, I know him since almost 10 years, so I know what he can bring and how he's, his vision of the game. And like, uh, he, he's really smart and he always brings something new to a team and he's really someone very important, you know. Uh, so for me, it was like a re well bonus. Then, uh, because we had Smith, uh, who had some problems with the AVP, we're gonna replace him with Kenny S, which is one who is one of the best AVP of the world. So it's gonna be the perfect. Uh, we had also a small problem uh, with RPK in Scream is when we, as T, when we were going to the bomb site uh, with pressure, sometimes uh, people didn't rush uh, enough faster. You know, they were kind of fearing that. And by getting Apex, who is the person who always run or whatever, like I was like, okay, we're going to solve this problem as well, and it, it's going to be better. So that was the main thing. Um, dirty in details, uh, how I kind of lead is like I give a lot of responsibilities to my co-leader, uh, as I did, for example, with Smith and Scream. And coming up to taking Apex, it was clear like he's, he's gonna be my co-leader, so he's gonna take care of everything into the mid round, uh, how to take an area. Like basically, you in classic you play as one three one, okay? So I was thinking about me and ABK on the A. You mean one three are, one in the map? There's one guy yes, on one on one side, it. the other three. Okay, understood. That's it. And me and ABK has kind of always been lurker uh, in our carrier. And I think we are really good lurkers. So we had good 
two good lockers. We got one of the best AVP in the world. We got the body who is still young, who is gonna uh, learn from Apex and uh, kind of good soldier, you know, and Apex who gonna like man manage these these three players together, you know. So everything was kind of perfect on the paper. And going up to the city side, uh, I saw that like giving to Kenny a lot of freedom so he can pick, do what he wants and stuff like this. And getting two supports like NBK and Body because they kind of play the same style, I would say, as mm -hmm. City. And by getting two uh, support like this uh, on the B side or on the A side or whatever, like the guy who will never rotate whatever happens since mm -hmm. the bomb is, is not planted or whatever, you know, it will give me uh, freedom because I'm a player who needs to move or whatever. Apex, same style, and Kenny S, kind of same style, you know? So that was my fault. Okay, okay, very good. Um, coming into 2017, um, we, of course, had a very tough beginning of the year, and you can, I guess, uh, uh, we don't have to get into it because, I guess, you know, the, the, the pressure from being called a super team, the expectations were very high in combination with you guys never having played or, or not lately having played together plus Smith changing role into a coach and blah blah so all those things I'm assuming you know take time but at some point uh, it became uh, no longer acceptable that the team was not playing at a proper level at least with some kind of consistency right um, what do you think happened throughout that process in which you went through some successes like DreamHack Malmo EPL um, uh, what was the other dream hack? Uh, you won another dream, dream hack tours? Yeah, Fritz. Took. Yeah, took. Um, what was the process? Uh, what was the difference between those victories in those tournaments and the incredible failures we went through in some other tournaments? And I guess you can also mention, you know, the major, for example, in which we passed the group stage, but truthfully, we didn't expect to lose in quarterfinals. So if you can walk us through kind of all those moments and what, in your opinion, shaped the results in those tournaments that'd be good uh all right uh then i think the whole year uh we changed a lot of style because we never find a style which can be consistent or who with some which style where everyone agrees okay who are, who are feeling comfortable with okay we had a lot of uh big personalities uh, into the team, which means a lot of people uh, need space in the game. And because of that, uh, it came to a point where it was clearly hard to satisfy uh, everyone because we are five and you can't, if you, you need to have a balance on a CS team. And if you have three players who get this freedom, then you will never be consistent and your game is going to be way too shaky, you know? Um, I think that, that's why we change a lot. Uh, I mean, I made a change um, because I was feeling like, okay, even if we won, like, it's not going to be good uh, if we continue like that. Uh, what I can give you as an example, if the wins we had uh, last year is when I was micromanaging the team as a leader in game. Uh, so, okay, we won and it was really good and it was good uh, uh, feelings and good uh, wins, of course. But uh, oh, there is two points. Like, first, honestly, this is not something how I enjoy uh, playing CS because before, before being my job, it's for my first my passion and I'm not taking pleasure by micromanaging the team and being like kind of this uh, leader in game who will kind of um, take care of everything around the map, uh, like everything gonna be good and stuff, like execution, pick, don't pick, like everything, you know? And it's a lot, mm. lot of energy uh, by doing that. And even if we won, like when I, f when I left the trophy, whatever, like two days after I was like, okay, it's cool. But I just can't do it like every day, you know. It's something like it happened maybe like this, like maybe two events in a year, you know, maybe because you are you are feeling it, you, you got the energy, and okay, let's do it. Trust me, I take care of everything, and let's go, guys. Okay, but 
you have to think like today you have a lot of official matches, you have a lot of practice, you have a lot of events. And I mean, personally, I don't have enough energy uh, to do it every single day. You know, that's not something possible. Uh, so we try a lot of different things. And I think they can, if I can sentence the world here uh, in a in one sentence, it's just like we have good players, yes, uh, but having good players doesn't mean like you will be a good team. What uh, define a good team is having a good chemistry between the person, between the players, outside and inside the game, getting the balance, and and that's it. And I just think like this team. Not saying like anyone was the problem, or whatever. It's just like we didn't fit together. Okay. Um, I guess we'll 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 get in, we'll get into we'll get into that a little bit later uh, in regards to um, what pieces exactly you thought weren't clicking. Uh, but for the moment, I think it's a good moment to, to um, mention. A, a question from someone with the hashtag YouTube podcast on Twitter called Matthias Hollander. That is, in, hind in hindsight, do you regret, so in hindsight meaning in the past, right? Uh, I mean, if you would have to go back in time, right? Do you regret taking up the mantle of leadership and sacrificing your individual performance? Uh, I don't think I regret it because it came to a point, uh, as for example, Natsan today, uh, I just thought like I was really believing in me and I wanted to pass a new step you know because I'm on the CS top level since I'm uh, five, uh, five <laughs> 15 15 is way better and uh, <laughs> and I, I it just came to a point where I just wanted more you know more responsibilities and uh, taking more things uh, on my own and I was really believing in me uh, today I can say like uh, I'm kind of, I would say, satisfied with my two years. Uh, I mean, I, I tried definitely my best, even uh, if we didn't win a lot of things or whatever. But I tried my best, and I can say today, like, okay, I'm not supposed to be a captain. Like, it's not in my personalities, you know? Uh, like, I'm someone who is really shy in the, in the, in the real world, I would say, uh, and who don't often... Uh, I don't. I don't like to push people. You know, I don't like to go to the fight. I don't like the fight. And when you are team captain, or when you are manager, or coach, or whatever, uh, or you are both, Carlos, sometimes you need to punch uh, your soldiers, your teammates, your whatever. You know, and this is not in my blood. And I think this is also a reason why uh, we had some problems uh, in my team when I was a captain. Is because by not doing this you are not solving directly the problems. So they just get into your team and getting bigger and bigger each day. And when it comes to a point where it's too much bigger, you are like, what the fuck I do? You know? Yeah. Well, then we actually have a headline right here. So you don't see yourself captaining teams uh, in, in, in the future. You want to go back to the 30, 40 bombs that you make us be used to. Yep, I think uh, I like the strategic aspect on CS definitely, and I think uh, I can bring a lot of helps to my uh, to my uh, to my captain and to my uh, in-game leader because I'm someone who likes That's to speak. Okay. And no, not even that, but especially in the game, like sending him some calls if he needs some help or mm -hmm. you know things like this. I will always help my leader even if he wants to to go on the server, trying to think together about the strategies. There's no problem or whatever. But I'm not the guy who can take care of the world team and all the players. Like, I tried, and it was a good experience, but I think I'm definitely, I can bring way more much as a player than I can as a captain in the team. What do you say, you know, when, you, when you're trying to be realistic with yourself, what do you say are your biggest strengths and your biggest weaknesses? as both uh, a player, a teammate, and, and if you want to even get there, a, a person. Can you say it again? Like, it's just the yeah. beginning? Yeah, yeah. So what do you think are your biggest strengths, your biggest weaknesses? Um, uh, in other words, what do you think you're best at or and worst at, uh, both inside and outside the game? 
Mm. Uh, do I start with the good or the bad things? <laughs> well, I, I think it's better to start with the bad. This is like this is a good tactic. Right? Yeah, yeah like when you go tactic. somewhere and you and, and you're like, um, you give the bad news first, and then you end up in a good note, right? Uh, that, that, that All right. Can. Okay, we're gonna try this. More inspiring. Uh, uh, okay, so I'm gonna start with the outside the game as bad things. Uh, as bad things, as bad things. Uh, I'm sure we can find some. Of course, I'm not perfect. Wow. No one is wow. perfect. <laughs> uh, but no, I, I think one of my biggest problems outside the game is, uh, as I said in my personality, sometimes it's really hard for me to say things to a person uh, if they're not really close to me. Like, right. if they're close to me, if they're friends, or if they're family, or even today, Carlos, right? I consider you like kind of close to me. Like, I can be 100% honest and that I won't have any problems by telling what I have on the heart, you know? But when I don't have the, this feeling with a person, like, it's way, I mean, it's really hard for me to say what I have uh, in my heart, right there, uh, you know. I understand. And would, when would I'm you not... say, actually, yes, just stop in there. Would you say that you're like, uh, uh, you know, very emotional when it comes down to the people you want to play with and 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 things of that nature? Very, I don't know, but emotional, yes, I am definitely. You know, like even if you see in the real life, you know, I I will give you an, an example. Uh, I remember like. Uh, Past years, uh, Freiberg did an interview when he said when he was in the school, he was playing uh, in the hockey and he was an attacker, all right, going to the goal. And that's why he was really uh, feeling confident, uh, like going in entry frag on CS or whatever, mm -hmm. all right? I've, and in my opinion, like, uh, what makes you your person in the real life, it's also what brings you uh, what you are in the game. You know, you can go uh, uh, in um, uh, in conflict. I would say in that. Okay. And for example, when you're taking with the emotional thing or whatever, like uh -huh. I'm the guy who gonna get the flowers for my wife, who gonna get a, a diner romantic with her, or whatever. You know, seeing like uh, writing like a poem. You know, like I'm this type of guy. So of course, when it comes to punching someone, like saying him the truth, like man, what did you do? Fuck it, you're fucking stupid, or whatever. Uh, it's it's kind of hard for me. You know? <laughs> yeah, I, see. I see what you mean. And the thing is, is it is a bad thing because because I take it of me and I'm not like uh, taking it outside of me. It just come bigger, 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 bigger. It's and, normal. Yeah, and and that's not good. I I understand. Okay, well, very good. That was very important, right? Uh, now your strengths. What makes you special as a player, and what makes Richard uh, uh, someone to be proud of? Uh, can I do the same thing? I would say I'm. I'm. A, when things like this doesn't happen, uh, I'm really like to be 100% honest uh, with the with the person. I think I'm someone who will always at least try to do better thing. Like every time I wake up. Uh, I always think that's kind of my philosophy. You can always do better. Even if you think you did your best, you still can do better. And I think that's also what brings me as a good player today is because like, even, I don't know, it never happens, but even if I will be like top one uh, next year or whatever on Shield TV, I won't be enough satisfied of me because in, in my opinion, you can always do better. You know, so there's always something to improve and it can be in the game and it can be also outside the game. And also, I'm also someone who you can speak with me. Uh, I will never like I'm, I'm kind of open. I would say I got my own opinions and I will fight for it, of course. Uh, but I can talk. You can communicate with me. I'm not someone who take fear, whatever. Like, uh, I don't think you fear of me, Carlos. I don't. I don't fear you. Yeah, I agree. I agree. You agree. Definitely. <laughs> uh, maybe I uh, wait. Do Do you fear me now? <laughs> so I have a. This is the most, actually, the most sensitive question of all. Okay, um, and you know where I'm headed. So you 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 can be as transparent as you can be uh, as you want to be. Sorry, and. Um, you're encouraged to, but 
again, it's up to you. What do you think did not work in 2017's G2 Esports lineup? Uh, and what have you tried uh, to change in order to fix that? Mm, I tried to change a lot of things, especially in-game, not much uh, outside because we had kind of stuff for it, you know. Uh, I tried to change position, to change role when I believed it was not the good way we were approaching the thing. Uh, maybe I tried sometimes to change too much and the players uh, were kind of lost about it. Maybe I didn't uh, speak enough with them by just uh, explaining them why I am doing this, why we are changing. Uh, so make everything sure like uh, they are on my side. Uh, mm, what was the, was the question? Yeah, what do you think didn't work? What do you think was just not clicking in the team? Or, or, or which players were not stepping up? And in which areas would you say they were not stepping up? And, uh, yeah. I just, as I said before, I'm not pointing one individual because that's, all, that's also fair. why I that, that's also why I wanted to make like kind of as you said a drastic changes or whatever is because in my opinion it was the whole team who just didn't fit together. So it was not about changing one player which made things like better, you know. So I don't think we didn't have we didn't have the same vision of the game. We were maybe kind of too much different outside the game. We didn't find our chemistry. Uh, we didn't find a good alchemy together. We didn't have enough balance in the game. We didn't ha have the best communication together. Uh, like a lot of things, you know? I see. So l let me actually rephrase this whole thing, okay? If, if you would have to, I mean, if you would have the opportunity to put the best possible team together, what would that team be and why? Oh, so that's, a, that's a tough one, actually. So I'm so, sorry for that. No, 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 that's not a problem. But uh, like uh, you're saying to me personally? Yeah, what would be your ideal lineup in all right. Counter Strike? You can so just we, go all in. All right. Uh, like, do, are you saying like hypothetically? Or uh, are you talking yeah, about the changes like I asked you? I'm talking, I mean, I'm assuming both are the same, one is right. the same. All right. Uh, but uh, yeah, so what things is your are getting spicy there? there. What again? Things are getting spicy there. I was getting spicy. I mean, what, what do you expect? It, it, it's, it's, minute, it's minute 90 of this, of this podcast, you know? So it's, it's about time, Richard. All right. So uh, <laughs> what I wanted to do. Uh, I wanted to remove NBK and Apex uh, because, uh, as I said, we definitely needed a drastic changes uh, to change kind of the core of the team. Uh, that's why my 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 thought. Uh, why not Buddy and why not Kenny? Because there are personalities who are kind of shy and can kind of adapt. I mean, who will just follow? You know, this is the type of players. So they would just follow. So they are not uh, uh, really problems when something is working or not working. Or not working. You know, like they would just follow. Uh, by replacing them, uh, I wanted existence uh, as a team captain and Smith coming back as a player, as a main rifle and not an ev and fucking GVP. Uh, he will definitely let that to Kenny. Uh, so that was uh, my uh, my option, uh, and Kenny was. Uh, I mean, existence is one hundred percent good with it. Smith is also in. Uh, Kenny was okay with it, uh, but Body didn't want to make his this change, and he was. I, I'm not gonna talk uh, as him. I think. Uh, he just didn't trust uh, this project at all. Okay, well, very, very straightforward. Um, you know, now, now, now that you mentioned it, um, let's go back into that moment uh, when you realized uh, these changes were, in your opinion, the best possible changes. And again, we are talking about uh, 
what happened back in time, right? As time goes by, uh, I'm assuming things may change. So whoever is watching, take this with a, with a grain of salt because um, this is the mindset that, that Richard had at that point in time. Um, however, not getting to that moment exactly when, when you and I dis, uh, discussed all these things. Um, how do you feel about this whole year and all of a sudden changing all this? What were your fears? What were the things that you didn't feel great about? Because I'm assuming it was, it was probably very hard for you to, to bring this up to us and, and, and kind of be as open-minded, as honest as you could. Um, yeah. So what kind of like made uh, me to ask the changes? No, how do you feel when you ask for these changes? Ah, what were the, the, uh, no. but uh, it's 50 50, I would say. Like, there is a part of me who didn't want, like we all said, like one year ago, uh, we're not gonna change, we're gonna go for a long term thing, we're gonna try, we're gonna work, we're gonna make the first team together, which is stable. Like, we, like, we had a lot of good words. So, there's a part of me which I was really like uh, sad about it because uh, if it just like I just didn't want to come to this point, of course. Uh, but there is also a part of me who, when I took up like all the year we had, this team was created, like we also said it, like it was also uh, almost created to win maybe two majors in a row, all right? And after uh, four or five months of practice, or being together, whatever, we did not even pass the group stage of the major, you know? Uh, even if we won like three tournaments, uh, one was kinda uh, later, I would say, the Mac Tour. Two were okay, but with all the expectation we had by creating the team, it was not something we can be happy with, you know? We were talking about winning really uh, a lot of trophies, getting the first spot on national TV, being one of the best of the world or whatever. And since, it didn't come and we tried for one year uh, for how I see the thing is like with all the work I personally put in and how we tried every time to make things good or whatever and you can see how our, our results or whatever on one year it's like there is something wrong and you can't fix it or whatever okay the first point normally when when you come to basically maybe the French team or even another team, when you make a shuffle, okay, so there's a lot of times you got this period of honeymoon, okay, you're gonna win a title, you're gonna be good for like three months, and just then you're going to step down. And when we created the team, that's the French special, by the way, that's it. And when we created the team, we just said, like, okay, when we're gonna step down, okay, we will have to think about it and to make everything sure that we're not gonna step down, okay. But with this lineup, we never had this period of honeymoon, we never like win directly titles or whatever. And all the year was just like fighting as much as we can to to be good, you know? Yeah. So you, I remember when we had these conversations, you actually didn't feel very good about, about kind of the change itself from an emotional perspective, um, especially considering that uh, in your opinion, the, 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 the problems that you wanted to change uh, were um, potentially unsolvable just because of the nature of the players themselves. Um, however, you then proposed a quite unconventional lineup, right? Uh, to say the least. I again, I read everything the fans talk about in regards to G two. Literally everything. I. I just know exactly how the average fan thinks about everything that happens, right? And with that specific lineup, which no one mentioned, I mean, uh, you didn't mention yourself until this point, but people did talk about, uh, there was a lot of uh, hesitation, you know? People, uh, you could even see people like Lurpes um, talking about um, existence, uh, for example, and how uh, he wasn't fit for a tier one team anymore. Uh, you could hear, or you could listen to a lot of people talk about Smith and, their, and, and his last kind of competitive months, right? 
and how it all was a failure. We have a lot of clips in YouTube and, and, and with the famous meme of, of Yolen Noob, of course, it, which I know he, he, he has fun with it nowadays. Uh, but what, like, what went on in your mind to go against all um, socially accepted lineup changes and go for the one lineup change that you know will get you potentially so much flack if it doesn't work. How in hell do you believe so much? In, and I, I'm not saying I don't believe, okay? I'm just saying that how in hell do you believe so much in these players when the vast majority of the rest of the world don't anymore? Uh, wait, wait, wait. Uh, well, first, it's persons that, uh, for example, Smith and Existence, uh, persons that I know for like you now 10 years, okay? And when you look at uh, the G2 team of uh, since two weeks, you no, know, we created last year, okay, with Apex, KNS, and BKM body. Okay, we have everything on the paper. 90% of the people were saying, like, okay, it's a fucking super team or whatever. Okay, we also fought. So, and the paper, it was really good, but the name of the firepower is not enough to be a good team on CS. That's why it's a team game, and that's why uh, we, you are five. And you, are, and you are not one plus one plus one plus one plus one, you know? And I think that's where we didn't have any experience about this last year because it was the first time we kind of reunite the eight top French player together. And that's also why I believe so much in this product today because I'm not putting first the fire pearl, but more the alchemy of the team, the team chemistry, the balance you need to have, the personalities of the person you're gonna play with, because today we are more together uh, in the in a year uh, than we see our girlfriends, or families, or your friends, or whatever. So mm -hmm. you you have to kind of enjoy these moments when you go to a tournament and you are happy to see your teammates. You know, it's really important to me. Uh, I also believe when we talk about existence that for having speaking with him uh, just uh, sometimes before, uh, it was really a good thing for him uh, when we decided to kick him because he was in a really negative mind because he was just stepping down months to months and year to yeah. year. And when we kicked him, it just uh, permitted him to take a fresh mind about it, about the situation, thinking of himself, of his lead, uh, of the game, of whatever, and taking two years and uh, as an experience when you're being in a top lower team, like you, like I, I know it's really hard to get this point 100% clear for me in English because I'm not an English based, of course. I think you're doing pretty well, but I, know. Um, I know that it really helped him a lot to see more clear. And the things. And and so, so you, what you're saying is that him taking a step back in a sub top team allowed him to see the game more clearly and allowed him to uh, kind of get more creative and just better at leading. That's what you yeah, mean. Yeah, definitely, definitely. And for having speak with him like last week for two or three hours, like I was like, you know, I was kind of sure at ninety percent, but there is always this ten percent. You know, you know, you know why they are here, but they are here. You know, and for having talking with him when. I just hung up the phone. I was like, damn, I want so fucking much to want to play with him because he's feeling the game as I feel. He's thinking kind of the same as I think. And everything was so much clear. And it was really, I was really happy having this talk with him, you know? And I mean, you, 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 Smith, and, and him come from the same kind of Counter Strike school, so to say, right? Yeah. The, 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 you know, the creative kind of team play and always looking. Uh, for 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 kind of tag team and and kind of plays right. Um, so c coming into this point, do you think in general teams nowadays are overestimating the power of firepower, or uh, do you think that the trend is going more towards what you propose yourself? 
No, definitely. I think the trend right now is you look at a lot of firepower. You just have to see about how how the analysts, the commentators, or whatever, every website, you have a lot of statistics. Everyone is talking about statistics. Everyone is talking about kills, about frags, about headshots, about whatever. But OK, it's cool. That's a, but that's the first thing you need to be a good player. Of course, it's to have skill. If you can't shoot a man, it's going to be hard, of course. <laughs> Let's be honest. But that's the that's just the first thing. Once you had it, you have to know how to work as a team. You have to have team play. You have to throw good grenades. You have to learn the timings. You have like so much things to do as a team. You have to have a really good communication. Like a lot of things. Skill is good, but it's like maybe 20, 25% of how being a good player. Mm -hmm. And of course, when you see phase, you have you cannot want to think like this but i think what people don't uh, see about phase is like uh they are both of course awesome individual but they are all awesome players like they know kind of know how to they're not individual right they kind of know how to play cs together so mm -hmm. that's the main thing that it's not about statistic like they are really good player overall and second point in my opinion Carrigan it's the best lead who can compose with uh, these players, you know, because he is very really, like impulsive, uh, creative. Uh, even Kiyoshima told me like uh, some days, some um, some months ago when he was playing with him, like sometimes we don't know. We go up to, to the freeze time and she's just creating a run when we go up to the freeze time, you know, like he's like this and it totally fits with the players he has in this team. So that's why, in my opinion, why phase uh, is working at the moment, but it's one case, you know. So you have you, not everyone can do that. Mm -hmm. Okay, fair enough. So when you look at kind of the, the top teams today, um, I will of course add SK Gaming there a hundred percent just because they are incredibly consistent. And yeah, they may have gotten a few tournaments, but you know they're an incredible team. Uh, I guess you can also add Face Clan. You can also add some of the newcomers. You can add you know Cloud Nine to some degree Fnatic. Um, even though even though there weren't many good teams in WSG, um, so kind of looking at the top teams, right? Um, would you? And, and by the way, I'm I'm not saying uh, uh, Smith and Existence wouldn't be kind of uh, able uh, able to perform against these teams. But do you think that people like Smith and Existence who have been either out of the game or not in pro play? going to be able to deal with the kind of skill level uh, that these best teams in the world uh, are having in their lineups? Uh, I think people can't really get a good opinion of this because they didn't see them since a lot of times. And when they saw them, it was in bad period. So they remember the, them as a bad per period, you know? For knowing them for now 10 years, I know what's they are capable of. And there is very few people that follow the game since years and years who know that as well as me, you know, but for the, all the other person, they just don't know. Mm. And the thing is, I'm not going to say like, you will see, trust me or whatever. I believe in them. And you will see that when it will come to the server and whatever, like they will prove it, you know, that's it. You, you you did tell me that uh, I remember one of the conversations we had. You did tell me that Smith was already uh, fucking shit up in <laughs> in that match. Yeah, definitely. I just uh, played some aim map this afternoon before going to the to the call uh, with fun or whatever. Man, he was fucking destroying me. Of course, he just aim up. <laughs> oh my god! Yeah. yeah, that would be actually hilarious. That he comes back and starts body bombing. <laughs> yeah, you you just like. In uh, like with the rifle, Smith has always been really good, and that's plus, true. that's also like it's just going to the server to the kill, to the statistic. But for example, what brings existence to a team for me is the main thing is something like I can be able to bring as a team captain. And what's lacked last, last year in our team is he's a real captain, he will take care of the thing, he will punch you, he will say the truth, he will always, you will always have like a, uh, a direction with him. You know, like, you know where you have to go or whatever, and he will always be there. He will always work. He will, he will always push harder or whatever. Like, this is something I always told him, even like eight years ago. I was thinking like sometimes because we had like 
11 hours a day, you know, of CS. And he was like, man, my brain is just fucking burning. And when we just stopped playing about 11 hours, I was like, okay, I'm done. I'm going to sleep, whatever, you know. And I come back on the PC, like, maybe two hours after, like, just to chill or whatever. And I see him on the server taking some grenades, some some tactics or whatever. And I'm like, fuck, damn, are you a robot? How can you do, you know? I just can't do that, you know? So that's his main strength as a captain, really. And when it comes to Smith, also, if you don't have the cap of the skill or whatever, he makes your teammates better. He's the one, he's the best teammate I've ever played with. And I can definitely say it today. Um, he's the one who, he's really generous. He doesn't care about being the star. He doesn't care about the statistic. He will do everything it can for the team to win. You know, like everything, baiting for you, throwing flashes. He will give you good solution when your team is blocked in an area or whatever. He will give you the mentality. He's someone is in, uh, in the pressure of high level, uh, like in the semi-finals of a major or whatever. At 15, 14, if you need to push, he will go away. He will make two fucking kills because he don't doesn't feel this pressure or whatever. You know, like he's this type of guy, like which is so important in a team. Yeah, you're a good salesman, man. You're, you're, you're. God damn it! You're, what's up with me here? <laughs> you know, I, I, I think this is a, you know, connecting with this topic. Uh, many of the questions from the from the chat, and many of the questions uh, with the hashtag uh, for this podcast have been, why is Shocks always sticking with uh, Smith? You know, and and I, I mean they. Many people just imply things, but you know why you want to stay with him. You know what makes him special. And well, I'm gonna say you 100 percent the truth. For me, I think I made a mistake by telling him, by asking him to be a coach. You know, because he was in a bad period, and I've just been influenced by the community. When you have 98 percent like saying you like Smith is bad or Smith is, Smith is weeping or whatever, mm -hmm. sometimes it's hard to still believe. You know, and I did the real mistake as even as a friend to stop believing in him at this point, you know, and big and like for like eight years of CS, I never uh, didn't play that longer without him, you know, and after one year. So I it's where you don't have the thing that you really realize how important they are. And that's what happened to me this year with Smith. All right, very good. Well, the t time to move on to the next stop. I think I thought it was very, very clear. If you want to say anything additionally in regards to Smith's existence or, or, or anything in regards to this topic, feel free. Um, but I uh, thought it was... But you see, it's really, it's really with my personalities, you know? Here, I got two flowers, one for Smith, one for existence. Hello, my lord, <laughs> it's for you. How many flowers do you have? Ah okay. man, a lot, a lot, because I, lot, I, I give a lot of flowers to, to, to my wife. You know, it's really important for the, for the woman to think like, to getting loved. You know, I love her, and she needs to know it. You know, so oh, she beautiful. has always a, a sense and a smiling, like a sun, you know, on his face, and I'm like, ah. Oh my God, people is, people is learning a lot about you. That's fantastic, man. And by the way, that's also the way Richard works internally with this team he's pretty much uh like this you know if, if he likes you he's going to be very forthright and he's going to be someone that is you know making you feel somewhat special every now and then you know and uh, he's not even even with me at times so i appreciate that with that said um i i you, you you've, you've never told me directly and i i know for a fact this is not the way you think um um, you've never told me directly, I will never ever play with Apex or MBK again. I know that, and I, I think it would be stupid also to say that, right? Um, so, uh, however, at this point in time, or whenever you wanted to take the decision, you really thought that the team wouldn't work together as well as you wanted to um, with, um, uh, with them both in the team, just because it made the whole team inconsistent and pretty much not cohesive, right? And that's the way I understood it. So for that reason, I want to kind of end the stream on a very good note. And I would like you to tell me and tell the, the, the people, what do you like from Apex and from Nathan, uh, from MDK? 
So what are the things you love from them as a, as a teammate, um, you know, their in-game strengths and outside the game strengths as well? You know, that's a tough question. You know, that's a really tough one, okay? Because I don't have anything against them, honestly. Uh, for me, Apex is just... Uh, no, but I meant things that you like from them, not weaknesses. I, I said things that you love from them. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but it's a really tough question because when you want to separate, when you want you to separate from someone is something like, you know, and then you're telling me like, giving him some, some love, come on, you know, it's a, t- <laughs> it's a tough uh, question. But, but, but it's, I mean, you, you've told me these things yourself. Uh, what are the yeah, things yeah, yeah. that you like? No, uh, I, I think, I think Nathan, uh, I think Nathan is, in my opinion, uh, because I don't really know to, how to take this question. So I'm gonna try to do my best. Uh, in my opinion, Nathan... Uh, what I told you, when in doubt, just be honest. You know, just yeah, yeah. For me, is. the the really good thing uh, to Nathan is uh, when he's a player, he's this soldier who you're gonna let, let alone in a B2, okay? Who is kind of someone calm, who you got cold blood, who, uh, and who will put his skills no matter what happened, okay? That definitely his strength. And that's also why I didn't want to to uh, to take this test with him as a captain, because it's totally personal. But I just don't trust in him uh, as a captain. For me, it's not his place. As of today, I can tell you, it's not my place either. You know. Okay, can I actually make a small comment here? Because uh, yeah, just to make it very clear for the viewers that um, uh, one of the reasons why uh, those changes you wanted where the changes you wanted were uh, partly because you knew that um, Nathan really wanted to lead and really wanted to take a step forward into leading. And, and for that reason, you didn't see, you didn't believe in the fact that he could lead. Um, but you've told me constantly that uh, as a player, you very much respect him. And I guess you just made it very clear right now. But I just wanted to make it very clear for the fans so they don't under- misunderstand it. You know? Yeah, no problem. And you know, I wish him, I wish him good luck. Uh, in, in the journey as a team captain because I did exactly the same two years ago when I decided myself to go as a captain because I really was believing in me, you know, and I was say, and I was thinking like, fuck, the, fuck, fuck it, I'm gonna, fuck everyone, I'm gonna be the best captain of the world or whatever. I was believing in me as he is today. So I got proper respect for that because I, 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 I know the feeling, you know. So you just, of course, when you have someone like this, who wants to go a step forward, uh, then there is not a lot of things you do, you, you can do, you know? So good luck to him and we'll see, we, we'll see how it goes. But I think he will also give him a lot of experience because I know for me being a captain, like gave me so much big picture about how a team is and how is it really working, you know? It's really different uh, when you are a player. They, they always say that if you have the chance to do the job of the person you intend to hire before hiring them, you will always do a much better job at hiring them. In other words, uh, if, if he, uh, you know, in, 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 your, in your mindset, uh, if he for some reason would fail to, uh, uh, to do his job as a captain, you still think that this is going to be very good for himself as a player because he will understand much better what it takes to be a captain. Yeah, definitions and so on. That that's interesting. Yep, that's interesting. All right, very good. And and then uh, why don't you go ahead and tell me uh, your positive thoughts about Apex? Uh, what 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 makes him in your eyes um, a, a good player? In which scenarios? Uh, I think uh, he's like a really really aggressive player. I never seen. I never saw someone like. At least in my teams, so much aggressive to be honest. <laughs> uh, and I just think like it's definitely his strengths because when he's pushing or whatever, like he's very really good at it. But in my opinion, uh, if you want to put him in the best condition, then you have to put him in an aggressive version of CS. And this is something, in my opinion, very really hard uh, because I don't think you can always. Being aggressive every round, you know, and yes, it's really it's really hard. Or at least I, I, I'm not comfortable uh, with that, and I didn't find a place for him in that team, uh, for it. 
because in the same time, it's not how I see sales. In my opinion, you can be aggressive, you can be passive, you can be like, I really like to, to be overall uh, player, you know? Uh, and that's definitely his strengths. And if Nathan has got a plan behind uh, his mind and really uh, find a way to put him in an aggressive way uh, and that it works with all the team, then then definitely it will be good, of course. All right, very good. Well, you know, Richard, I think you were incredibly, incredibly transparent. Um, and, and I want to thank you for that. Uh, I know it's, it's not easy, especially knowing that... Uh, I mean, you, you know, you, you just pretty much told the world that this is something that you wanted to make it happen. And, and I honestly, it honors you as a, as a person that you take the blame on the mistakes you, you committed. And at the same time that you take full ownership on whatever changes you wanted to make. Uh, and I very much appreciate that. And that's the first trait of, uh, of a gentleman, of someone consequent with his actions. So uh, with that said, um, do you want to add anything in relation to the fans, G2, or really anyone you want to add? Um, any shout-outs you want to make? Uh, well, uh, I wanted to thank every person who sent me a message uh, for their support. Can be when I was uh, when the news came out and I was that I will be on the bench because, of course, I will still be on the bench for at least one or two months. So it's not something really. Uh, easy to deal with when you got the passion to to play and like uh well you're gonna play this match okay that's cool thank you bro so <laughs> <laughs> but uh so thanks for that and also big thanks to everyone who's giving me some good words as i said on twitter uh going up to the surgery because as i said it's something kind of stressful for me it's coming up to friday uh so thanks for that i will keep you informed about uh how it will be good and how am I recovering and stuff like that. Uh, and be sure that uh, I will be back definitely on the server. And yeah, for everyone person who follows me, then don't worry, this day will arrive and I will come back. And if I got my wrist uh, repaired, I can tell you, I'm gonna fuck them all. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. I like that. That's a good ending. That's a fantastic ending. Richard, you're a fucking legend, bro. And, you know, I respect you. I admire you. I've been working for two years and it's been an absolute pleasure. And, um, yeah, I guess for everyone, it's incredibly clear right now uh, what happened and why it happened and, and why, uh, you know, we had to take the decision we had to take. Um, you also understood yourself, Richard, which I very much appreciate. No, no, I uh, didn't understand. Honestly, I hate you, Carlos. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> no, we love fine. you. We, we love you, and we know uh, that uh, once you get back, you'll fuck shit up, like you said. Best of luck, bro. And again, we appreciate you. Thank you. Goodbye. And now, it's myself alone. Uh, I'm completely unimportant and uninteresting. Anyway, I want to thank all, absolutely all our partners, Logitech, AOC, Pace of Car, Need for C, Vodafone, and ESP uh, for their support, for making everything possible. And I want to thank all of you people for being there. This is the first podcast of G2. This is my first podcast, which I'm a host of. Please provide me your feedback. You can be as harsh as you can. Just uh, don't call me the C word. I, I, would, I would actually appreciate that. And not much else to say. G2esports.com slash shop. Fucking buy everything. Or I'm going to find you. I'm going to murder you. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the show. With that said, you know, this show exists because of you guys. We want to teach you about esports. We want to entertain you. And for that reason, please provide us with which topics do you think we should be speaking about? Which people do you want us to invite? And um, yeah, with that said, please head over to g2esports.com slash shop. Uh, we do our best efforts to create the best possible merchandise for you guys. So please check it out. Uh, buy anything you like and see you on the next podcast. See you on the next episode.